Okay, welcome to the next episode of Michaela's Questions. So we have a couple of questions that were submitted, and let's see if I can get through uh, one of them uh, this session. Uh, and the question is this, in the reading of the Great Commission, Jesus said that if you are struck on the cheek, to turn the other also. But it seems to contradict 2 Chronicles 18, 23, and Acts 23, 2 and 3. And so uh, how do we... How do we um, understand this? Well, let's, um, let's look at this. Now, first of all, in Matthew 5.39, which talks about uh, turn the other cheek, this was instructions for your personal life. It was instructions of how to live as a Christian in order that your Christian testimony be uh, upheld. And also, it was not at the Great Commission. Uh, it was just general instructions of, uh, of uh, how to live a, a Christian life. Um, and Christ gave those instructions uh, to, uh, to the apostles, again, in Matthew 5, 21 through 48. We'll look at that in just a moment. But to understand the, the, the difference in these situations, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18 and uh, verse 23. Now, you're welcome to look at uh, the whole chapter and uh, to get a better understanding of the context here. But here, let me, uh, let me just uh, uh, share it with you, you will, and then go afterwards and read it yourselves. But the king of Israel came up and visited Ahab, excuse me, king of Judah came up and visited Ahab, king of Israel. That is the northern ten tribes. The king of the southern uh, tribes came up to visit the king of the northern tribes. Ahab was uh, a little bit uh, upset at the Assyrians for... Uh, uh, raids against Israel, and it was coming to a uh, conflict. And, um, and so uh, they wanted to uh, go to war with them. But before they did, uh, uh, they, they always sought out the Lord. And, and uh, the king of Israel was uh, a godly man, Jehoshaphat. Uh, he wasn't perfect, but he was much better than most of the kings had been. And he feared Yahweh, the Lord, otherwise known as the Father. And uh, and so he insisted that Ahab uh, call up all the, all the prophets. So Ahab calls up 100 prophets, and they all prophesy, and they say, oh, go, go, and, and you will win. You will surely win. So the king of, uh, of Judah, uh, uh, Jehoshaphat, uh, says to Ahab, king of Israel, uh, you know, don't you have any other prophets other than these? He could tell that they were just giving lip service to Ahab. And so he calls up 200 more, and, uh, including the chief of the prophets and, uh, who came, and they did exactly the same thing. And uh, they, um, they were going to um, only say what Ahab wanted to hear. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, um, uh, Zedekiah, uh, uh, the king of the prophets, or not king, excuse me, the uh, chief of the prophets, came up and even made uh, horns of iron and uh, he acted like, with these horns of iron that are unbreakable, you will surely win and gouge out the enemy and, and you will come back triumphant. So even after this show, uh, uh, the king of Judah uh, was uh, not happy and uh, thought, well, uh, Zedekiah can make uh, horns of iron for himself and say, thus saith the Lord, or thus saith Yahweh, with these you shall gore uh, the Armenians uh, and, um, until they're consumed. Uh, and um, he still didn't believe him. So he, he asked Ahab one more time, isn't there a prophet that you can bring? And so Ahab finally said, well, there's one more. And um, I don't like him, though, because he never says anything good about me. So I know the king of uh, uh, Judah then thought, okay, here's somebody I can probably trust. And so, so he said, okay, bring him. So he did, and they brought uh, um, uh, Micaiah, uh, and he was a prophet of God that um, feared the Lord, and he would only say what the Lord uh, said to uh, uh, say. So Micaiah came, and he had, he had heard what all the other prophets were saying, and so he came and he um, uh, mockingly said uh, to the king, Behold, the words uh, of the prophets 
are uniformly favorable to the king. So please let your word uh, be like one of them and speak favorably. Excuse me, the, uh, uh, let me back up. The messenger of the king said this to Micaiah. Please let your word be uh, favorable so that it will sound the same as the rest of the prophets. But Micaiah said, As Yahweh lives, what my God says, that I will speak. So verse 14, when he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth, Gilead, to battle, or shall I refrain? And then he said, here's where he said mockingly, go up and succeed, for they will be given into your hand. So he said it in a mocking way, because the king knew he was, he was lying. Then the king said to him, how many times must I adjure you to speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of Yahweh? So Ahab is asking for the truth, <laughs> even though he knows it's usually not good. <laughs> so he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each of them return to his own house in peace. Then the, then the king of uh, Israel, Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, did I not tell you that he would not uh, prophesy uh, good to me concerning, uh, concerning me, but evil? So Ahab's complaint is this. This man is always speaking evil to me. He should have thought about that. He wants him to only speak what the Lord tells him. But if it's always evil, what does that say about Ahab? It's the Lord trying to tell Ahab, look, you have nothing in you but evil. So evil is being spoken about you. Instead of getting that clear message, he instead complains that the Lord is always speaking evil through Micah about him, or Micaiah. Verse 18, Micaiah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven, heaven standing on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, who will entice Ahab, king of Israel, to go up and fall at Ramath Gilead? And uh, one said this, while another said that. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, how? And he said, I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, you are to entice him and prevail also. Go and do it. A couple of important things to, to notice here. The Lord is showing uh, uh, Micaiah that here's what happened in heaven which shows us a couple of important things. Number one, demon spirits are still in heaven. They still have access to heaven to accuse the, the, the saints. Demon spirits are still there. And so this demon spirit volunteered, I'll go, I'll be a lying spirit. This isn't an angel, a good spirit, because angels don't lie. This is a lying spirit, and it went in the mouth of its prophets. So Micaiah was showing everybody present there, here's how all these 300 plus Zedekiah had prophesied. They prophesied so zealously because a spirit is on them, but it's a lying spirit. He says, verse 22, Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these your prophets, for Yahweh has proclaimed disaster against you. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, came near and struck uh, 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 Micaiah in the cheek and said, How did the spirit of the Lord or of Yahweh pass from me to speak to you? So here we have the question. How come when the Lord gave instructions to the, to the apostles in Matthew 5, he said, If you are struck on the one cheek, turn it to them also your other. So you, you've heard the expression your whole life, turn the other cheek, right? So here, Micaiah was struck on the cheek, but Micaiah answered and he said, verse 24, Behold, you shall see on that day when you enter the inner room to hide yourself. In other words, the punishment to prophets to that speak falsely is death. So what Micaiah was telling Zedekiah is this, you're going to be hiding trying to avoid the king's servants who come to drag you out to be killed for prophesying falsely. And so instead of submitting to the, to the beating or to the smacking of his face, he instead prophesied against Zedekiah. So doesn't it look like we have a contradiction here? Why did Jesus say, just turn the other cheek? But here, 
It's different. Here, Micaiah is, is saying, no, the Lord's going to punish you, and you're going to end up losing your life. Well, because it's two different things. In um, Matthew chapter 5, what the Lord is referring to is, he's referring to if lawful authority, and the whole context is the gospel. If you're out preaching the gospel, you're doing righteous. And lawful authority drags you before the judges and the priests. And they say, uh, you shall not uh, 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 preach in the name of Jesus again. And, they, and the punishment that day, a public humiliation, was to slap you on both cheeks. And, uh, and so if they slap you on the cheek as your public humiliation and your punishment for preaching the gospel, instead of, instead of them forcing you to turn your head to get hit on the other cheek, which is what almost always had to happen, the Lord said, no, just turn with them the other cheek. Let them go ahead. Go ahead. Because they're smacking you for righteousness sake, uh, uh, according to the law. Okay. The problem here, it isn't the same situation in 2 Chronicles because Zedekiah was going against the law. He was going against the law because the proof, he was supposed to wait till proof came. The proof was whose prophecy would come true, Zedekiah's and the 300 or Micaiah's. So he's supposed to wait till after the truth came out and then see who gets struck or who gets punished. And uh, also... Uh, Zedekiah was not uh, uh, striking him in the name of the king or in the name of the law. He was just angry. He was just mad. And so he came up and struck him because he said, has the voice of the Lord left me to speak through you? So his pride was hurt. And also his life was threatened by this. So it was a totally different situation. It wasn't a, a striking uh, uh, according to the law. It was a personal affront uh, that was not according to law. So it wasn't the same thing. And let me go quickly to Acts chapter 23, verses 2 and 3, and show you another one here. This is Paul before the council, before the priests. It says, And the high priest Annas uh, commanded those standing beside him to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall, and do uh, you sit and try me? according to the law and in violation of the law, order me to be struck. So he's saying, who are you to strike me according to the law and in violation of the law? But the bystanders said, do not reveal, or excuse me, reveal, revile God's high priest, or uh, uh, do you revile, revile God's high priest, excuse me. Then verse five, and Paul said, I was not aware, brethren, that he was high priest. For it is written, you shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. So Paul's uh, perceiving this. I didn't know he was high priest. He didn't know where the order came from. He, just, he thought the, the guard just came up and struck him. So he thought, that's not according to the law. So now he says, okay, it was a, a order from the high priest. Okay, that's according to the law. So in a sense, he's apologizing and he's saying, um, uh, I didn't know he was the high priest. And then um, the Lord then, uh, and then so he even quotes the law. He says, okay, I, I was wrong. The law does say this. So, he, so he's apologizing. He's, he's admitting his fault. But then verse six, but perceiving that one part was Sadducees, the other part Pharisees, Paul began crying out in the council, brethren, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. I am on trial for the hope uh, and resurrection of the dead. So the Spirit of God spoke through him to say this so that he would split the council. Half were Sadducees who didn't believe in the resurrection. Half were Pharisees who did believe. So they started arguing amongst each other that uh, Pharisees wanted to let him go at this point. <laughs> the Sadducees said, no, 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 we got to try him. You know, and maybe we should hit him again. <laughs> but, uh, but so the Spirit of God through Paul uh, threw them into total disarray. But Paul... Remember what I'm saying here. Paul admitted he was wrong. Paul said, all right, I, the law says this, and so I, I shouldn't have spoke out and said what I said. Uh, uh, so he admitted he was wrong, because according to the law, they struck him. And uh, uh, so uh, it's exactly what Jesus said. Paul, if he would have realized who had given the commandment, what should he have done? He should have turned the other cheek. And doing so, 
everybody there would have seen, oh, he's submissive. He's not rebellious. He's not angry. He's not uh, contentious with the high priest. He's submitting to the law. So this is a lawful man. He's not a, a lawless man or a lawbreaker. It, it, it just screams out that the presence of Christ is in this man. And that's what Jesus wanted uh, to be seen. And that, brethren, is why Jesus gave the instructions to turn the other cheek, is to submit to the law. Okay. Uh, he also told uh, uh, the, the brethren in that discourse in Matthew 5, 21 through 28, many other things that the people didn't want to hear. For example, if a, if a Roman comes up and tells you, carry my burden, my pack for a mile, by law, they had the right to force you to carry their pack for one mile. Jesus said, no, go twice that distance. Go twice that distance. And then and cheerfully and hand the man his pack at the end. Why? Because it'll give you a chance, if the man sees that you have a gentle and a submissive heart, it gives you a chance to witness to him and teach and bring the gospel. That's why the whole, the whole discourse there is how to live godly and reveal Christ through your actions. And uh, instead of being angry and uh, rebellious and vengeful, uh, being submissive and law-abiding and, uh, and, uh, and ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within. Okay, hope that answers the question for you. And we'll see you on the next Michaela's Questions.